Anthony Martial. When I hear that name, what do you think? You may think about, okay, let's not take the piss here. You think of this moment. Oh, yes! Welcome to Manchester United, Anthony Martial! For the best football prints in the market, support my own company, Mazar Designs, Dakota UK. Link down below, top of the description for the best football prints you could possibly get, all made by myself. Use code New Year for 20 percent off for any club i'm guaranteed that we've probably got it in the uk or scotland so have a look and let's get straight into the video i think people forget how long martial has been at manchester united and the actual expectations that was put on this man when anthony martial joined manchester united in the summer of 2015 the hype and expectation was through the roof a young french attacker from monaco I mean, what player does that make me think of Thierry Henry? Just in case if you weren't thinking of the same player we all were thinking. The hype was so insane that when he joined Manchester United, there was indeed a Ballon d'Or clause. This was leaked only a couple of weeks after he signed for Manchester United. And if you did forget, he did cost United £58 million from the transfer for a deadline day move. However, that 58 million was a collection of three clauses. The initial amount was 36 million, and it was three 7.2 million clauses. The clauses related to three separate different achievements that he had to achieve to pay Monaco the rest of the money. 7.2 million each, actually. Number one was score 25 goals in the next four years. It's more than possible to imagine a player scoring 25 goals, especially as a striker at Manchester United that would definitely get that amount of service. This, of course, was reached as he did score 17 goals in his first season for Manchester United. In his second season, only scoring eight, which um, was quite a poor season for Martial. Surprisingly, I didn't even notice. He only scored four goals in the entirety of the 16-17 season in the Premier League. But I guess when you have Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I guess you may not be too surprised. But he did then hit it the next year, scoring nine goals in the Premier League in 17-18. So, Monaco, congrats, here's 7.2 million quid. ka -ching. Clause number two, earn 25 French international team caps in the next four years. This is from the period of 1516 to, I imagine, 1890. And this, sadly, was not hit, as he only had a, a good collection of friendlies, but they were all in the 2015-2016 years. But in 17, 18, 19, he only had about four. His debut coming against Portugal in 2015 before joining Manchester United. However, in the end, he only had 18 caps for France in that entire four-year period. So, no money to Monaco. And then came the third clause, the most important and the most well-known. Win the Ballon d'Or by 2019. 7.2 million quid. This, of course, was never hit, and I don't think he came really close to ever really hitting it. However, he did win a Golden Boy Award, which is still a great achievement in itself. I can't exactly find the highest he ever came in the Ballon d'Or rankings, but I don't think he ever made a top 30. Keep in mind, too, back in 2015, 58 million pounds, which was the full sum back in the day, was a lot of money. I know money now is all over the place and no one really cares anymore, but this was a lot of money for a young footballer that realistically didn't do anything. Let's keep in mind the stats he had at Monaco. He was at Monaco for a total of three years after joining from Lyon. I forgot that he was even at Lyon, but he was. And in those three years, he scored 15 goals and eight assists in 70 appearances. I mean, it doesn't really scream Ballon d'Or winner, does it? However, let's be fair, keep in mind the fact that he was only 19 when he joined Manchester United, so he had still many more years left to come. However, when you compare Martial and what he did at that age compared to, let's say, in recent years, an easy example is Kylian Mbappe, to say that he's worthy of putting a Ballon d'Or clause was very, very... Um, what's the word for it? Um, optimistic. 
In 13-14, he scored two goals in Ligue 1. In 14-15, he scored nine goals in Ligue 1 in 35 appearances. And in 15-16, of course, he then left. So technically, actually, 15 goals in two seasons, which, again, for a 17-18 year old is decent. It's, it's quite good, but not Ballon d'Or good because Kylian Mbappe only had really one full season at Monaco in 16-17 and scored 15 goals and 11 assists in one season. So just to kind of compare Martial and Mbappe this time period. Quarter by the Monaco president Vadim um, Vasilev definitely butchered that. The price for Martial is £57.6 million. But take into account this sum includes bonuses, which are very realistic. Which, to be fair, caps for France and the goals is realistic. Ballon d'Or, possibly not. But let's not talk too much about that anymore. Number one that we kind of need to get into here. What about now? Martial, have you really heard of him since 2020? I don't even, I can't even tell you a goal that he scored since 2021. I think the last goal that I remember that had some sort of meaning or um, knowledge of is a goal that he scored in the Europa League against some team that had a black kit. I forgot who it is. I need to Google it quickly. I, I don't even know who it's even against, but it just looked really, quote unquote, cold because that is the main thing about Martial, apparently. When you think of Martial, you think of cold. You think of him being very serious and not really emotional he has the same facial expression no matter if he's happy or sad when he scores a goal when he misses a goal the same face even though that's obviously not true that's the kind of mean that people carry around martial and the first picture i find is actually from manchester united themselves tweeted ice cold cold emoji black gloves glove emoji you know how it goes what team is this against i think it's Partizan Belgrade? I think it is, but many people otherwise prefer to call it Juventus. I mean, black and white stripes, same thing, right? And looking at that kit that was back in 2019, that's 1920 kit. So I, I can't tell you a goal that he scored since then that I actually have any real memory of, which is a bad thing to say because he actually had quite a few really promising moments. I mean, of course, the first goal, I can tell you that exactly, of course, when he scored a great goal against Liverpool. I forgot who he turned, but I think, was it Skirtle, I believe? And of course, the iconic commentary, Martial! Brilliant, incredible. Even his second game, I believe they played Southampton in the next game, away from home, and I remember that kind of black, funky kit. It was like him and the pie, that's kind of vibes I get. And I remember the excitement, the hype. They've got Thierry Henry again. It is a new Thierry Henry. I mean, a, a player that likes to drift on the left-hand side, coming from Monaco, a Frenchman with some pace and has a bit of flair and ability. He's got a bit of a attitude as well, which you think is unique. He's not just a boring player. This is, this is literally Thierry Henry. You can't get this any wrong. However, in the last couple of years, the tide has changed, and he has had some good years particularly back in 1920, actually. So in 1819, he scored 10 goals in Premier League. Then the next year, in 1920, 32 games, 17 goals, 6 assists. I mean, I remember the pictures very well of him and Marcus Rashford and uh, Mason Greenwood, of course. They had a great, like, trio back in these days. And when Bruno joined, he, he helped out even more. And then something changed drastically. He went from four goals to nine goals to 10 to 17 and then four and then one goal and then six and then one this season. This is just talking about Premier League goals, by the way. The most goals that he scored in the Champions League in one campaign is two. The most goals he scored in any cup is two. And he scored four in the Europa League back in 1920 at least. But in the big games, I can't really tell you anything that he's particularly done. I found an article here by The Athletic titled, Is Anthony Martial a con man or just in bad form? This was three, two years ago. And there's a quote here by Paul Scholes on October 2020 saying, Martial almost conned us into thinking he was one high level striker at the end of the season because he scored so many goals and he was quite good. He started this season quite poorly again, which makes you think he isn't. It's misleading. That's why I kept saying we need a top class number nine. Is he a con man or just in bad form, as the article suggests? And he looked into it. What is Martial good at? That's a key question here. 
what is he good at at football? He is a naturally very talented player and he often relied on a, a finishing ability that was a bit just above average to get him out of a lot of situations. And since scoring a Thierry Henry type of goal against Liverpool, there's been a lot of people hoping for the best of him. And he's got that in his locker. I can tell you 5-10 goals that he scored from drifting in from the left-hand side and then drifting, drifting towards the box and then curling a beautiful goal into the top right corner. He's done that, I think, 10, 15 times. And that's almost a trademark goal of Martial. On the left, drift inside, finesse shot, top right bins. It's like playing FIFA almost, of how consistent it was, especially in the 1920 season. Martial, with his natural, incredible ability, was able to really take a, a half chance into a goal and did it on a consistent basis. This type of Henri type of play style, which you, again, on the left, drift inside, is something that they kind of have in abundance at United, where they have Marcus Rashford, who is quite a similar player, but doesn't have the finishing ability in comparison to Martial. He's definitely got that more in his locker. And this is the important thing I want to say here. Martial is talented. He's just a really, a, he's a purple patch type of player for me. Again, similar to a Marcus Rashford, unfortunately. Martial is a good attacker, which has displayed his ability quite often at a, at least a Champions League level quality of player. If the ball comes to him, he usually makes it count when he's on form. The problem is, not every team is better with him in a team because of the rest of his game. And this is when we get into the breaking point of where most Manchester United fans just kind of fall apart with Martial. And that is his almost sad or disconnected demeanour and body language, which, similar to something that we attach to a, a Mesut Ozil, labels him as a lazy footballer. However, this doesn't mean that he's an enthusiastic football player, but he can be naive in attack. Martial, back in 1920, he had a very good read on the game. He knew what his players around him would do. He knew that when it was a time to make a run, when Pogba receives a ball in a half turn, he knows where exactly to run on the pitch to make that run. There was a, a connection there that he knew exactly where to be at what time. And even with uh, Bruno Fernandes, he had a good chemistry with them back in that season that he knew where to be and when to make that run. However, this does come with an issue. What happens when those players don't make those passes? For example, when a Pogba, back in these days, went for a much more safer pass when he received the ball and not going for a through ball each time like what Martial would prefer, he gets visibly much more frustrated and he has a, a frustrating habit of standing in positions during moments that he's out of play and he's not really in the correct areas. So he makes a run, that they don't pass the ball to him, he gets annoyed and then gets annoyed for 15 seconds or so, 10 seconds before he gets back into position and by time another attack occurs, he's not in the right place. He can sometimes stay too far into central areas where defenders can double up on him or he's too close to other players around him where he's too easy to mark. When you compare Martial and his positioning compared to what Pep did at Man City, for example Raheem Sterling, it's a completely different level of um, tactics here. Another issue that people have with Martial is not just this demeanour of not being interested, but also his work ethic. Is he running enough? Is he tackling enough from the front? And this is something that needs to be brought up because that's the main thing that people um, have a complaint about. And that is back in 1920, in his best year, when you compare him to the other three attackers with him, Rashford and Mason Greenwood, he was by far lowest in pretty much every defensive stat. In interceptions, in recoveries, in dribble pass rate, in in the tackle win rate, he's bottom for each one. With Greenwood, by the way, double on top of both of them almost. When Greenwood had 7.8 recoveries, Martial had 2.6. However, these are stats, and maybe stats don't tell the full story, but when you connect with the stats of him being typically the lowest on the list for all strikers in the Premier League for the most defensive actions, and when you can partner that with his kind of more detached demeanor, it is a bad blend that gives some fans the wrong opinion. And even though he maybe puts some effort in, even when he does, 
it doesn't really show as often as it really should do. For example, let's compare this to 2021, which with the same three forwards in Rashford and Greenwood, of course, I gotta say as well, I do apologize for saying Greenwood too much. I know that people don't talk about him. However, in these two seasons out of his best season and his worst season back to back, I've got to mention him because he was involved then. Um, so in 2020-2021, Martial with only 1.5 tackles per game and Greenwood with 4.2 and Rashford with 2.4. In terms of recoveries, Martial 3.9, Rashford 5.3 and Greenwood 7.2. And dribbled pass rate, this is how often a player just goes past him and he doesn't really try to press or move at all. Uh, Martial 86% times he's dribbled past and Rashford 65 and Greenwood 53. There's a massive gap here and uh, one that is just uh, not acceptable for a player at a Premier League club and in recent years this hasn't really changed one bit. So you put all this together and Martial has gone from a bright spark that can create moments of magic to someone who is fizzling out and gets lost in matches. Martial from my time watching football had the worst strike performance that I've ever seen when I watched him live when I went to Old Trafford to watch Burnley beat United 2-0. I was there in the way end, a great day and I remember fondly watching Martial for 5-10 minutes and he didn't move, he didn't look interested to really move, he wasn't pressing, he was barely even trying. And despite these being stats back in you know, 2021, 20, these stats still maintain to this day and with Eric Ten Hag who had some hope that maybe he could get something more out of him but it feels like he's just, he's, he, I don't know how he's still there. He's definitely outgrown his day at United and he feels like he belongs in that kind of Paul Pogba, Lukaku era, um, that, you know, that kind of Jose Mourinho era that is slowly, of course, being took apart season by season. He feels like he's just a, a memory of that type of that time at United that is just still just wandering around. As of December 13th, Man United are not activating his contract option so it looks like at the end of the season he will be leaving but where should he go to he did indeed spend some time overseas in late jan he was loaned out to spanish club sevilla and similar to the time he was at united he scored a goal within his first game the scenes was incredible marshall he's back but it did the same thing again. As quoted from the article from The Athletic, Anthony Martial's unaspiring time at Sevilla, he didn't play in the final games and nobody cared. In that same season, 21-22, he didn't play. He played only 209 minutes out of a possible 1,900. Sevilla considered this a coup. At the same time, Juventus was also interested in taking him, but he wanted to go to Spain. In his first 10 Liga games, he could have played. He, he started seven and missed two due to injury, but he didn't score any goals in the Liga and just had one assist. And Sevilla's form was starting to suffer almost the second that he joined, as prior, they were second in the league and doing really well. However, when he joined, they won only two of his first eight games that he featured. His last appearance for Sevilla was on April 17th against Real Madrid, and this was the last time that you were going to see of him. He started and he got subbed off after an awful tackle on Camavinga, and then after taking a lead, Real Madrid made a comeback, and just like that, and just like that, Sevilla's tattoo charge ended, and so did Martial's season. After the remaining six games, he wasn't even in the squad for the next three, and then came on for the final 23 minutes at home to Mallorca, and then was absent again for the next two matches. As quoted by his time at Sevilla by Sevilla fans, they said that they would describe his time at Sevilla as deception. Sevilla became known as a club that revived footballers when they had bad times. For example, Eva Bernega from Valencia went to Sevilla and revived his career. And for Martial, they sadly couldn't do that. He pointed out Martial's perceived poor attitude and he didn't appear committed in Manchester and he was cold on the pitch and he didn't convince Sevilla that he was trying to make any effort either. As quoted, he was given a lot of love from the dressing room, but he didn't give it back it appeared. He was cold and distant. Nothing good in media either. An interview with the official channels when he signed, but nothing in the press room, nor with the supporters. There was a complete indifference to him. He wasn't even whistled. This poor time at Sevilla may concern some people of exactly how would he do at a different club. Keep in mind, he's 28. He's not exactly old now. 
he should be in the peak of his career. However, this could maybe be another story of a player that received the entire world at too young of an age and didn't really need to prove himself again. At the age of 19, you've been the main number nine at Manchester United and you've been told all this insane achievements that you could be a Ballon d'Or winner. You've been paid an insane amount of money and you've achieved your life goal at such a young age. What is the motivation to move forward? And that's something that I don't like with modern football that because of how much money's in the sport, too many young players get given the world way too early. And unless they have a very strong, strong group around them, it's so hard to keep them on the ground and to keep moving forward, to keep progressing. And with Martial, it appears that he's fallen victim to this. What's the point of him working any harder when he simply doesn't need to? He's made his money, he's achieved his goals, now he's done and he doesn't need to get any better and if you are not improving then you're dying in the sport and that's what he's been doing for the last three to four years there's many footballers that you can attach with this same idea and i'm not going to name them but you can instantly think probably five on top of your head so this year he's played 13 games but pretty much all of them off the bench with one goal in the premier league and four appearances in the champs league two so what now for him well he's clearly going to leave united and in my opinion i think he will likely go to france or you know what maybe saudi arabia i'm sure they'll probably have a an offer for him from somewhere tell me where do you think martial would be tell me tell me what you think about him do you think that he is um just really do you think he's disrespected do you think that people disrespect martial that his demeanor similar to ozil is overshadowing his actual talent and the real reasons behind it i'm really interested to hear what you guys think about him and yeah comment down below smash a like on the video and subscribe if you're new thank you for all the love and i hope you had a merry christmas and yeah i'll see you next time bye